Good morning, everyone. It's Dr. Ruddy. Welcome back to Morning Rounds. I want to speak to you today about a subject known as neoadjuvant chemotherapy. That is the treatment in which uh, a patient who is recently diagnosed with breast cancer is advised to have her chemotherapy before she has her surgery or her radiation therapy. So these therapies are considered to be adjuvant. Neoadjuvant means basically start with a chemo. Now why would you want to begin with chemotherapy? Well, let me give you an example from my practice. I saw a patient, uh, her name is Kathy, and uh, she came to my office, she's a woman in her 40s, and uh, she said, I just discovered a lump in my breast. And she emphasized the fact that she had just discovered it uh, because the lump was large and she didn't want me to think that somehow she'd been walking around with this huge lump in her breast for a long time and was just hoping that it was going to go away. So I examined her breast and yes indeed she had a very large lump in her breast. And when I felt under her arm I could feel that she had at least one pretty large lymph node there as well. We did a mammogram and ultrasound and the images showed that this tumor was 10 centimeters in size. It was a big tumor and indeed it had grown in about really uh, just a few weeks. So I suggested to Kathy that we begin with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and she was very surprised because most women who are told that they have breast cancer by the way, we did a needle biopsy, which confirmed that it was cancer. Most women who are told that they have breast cancer sort of strap themselves in and get themselves ready for surgery. When the doctor suggests that perhaps it might be better to start with chemotherapy, they're somewhat bewildered. They don't understand. Uh, they get themselves ready for surgery, and all of a sudden, the plan has changed. The reason that it is often very helpful to begin with chemotherapy is that the chemotherapy will shrink the tumor. That's very important because it means that there's a potential for the patient to not require as much surgery when it comes time to have the surgery. But most importantly, it allows both the physician and the patient to see real time in that patient how well the chemotherapy is doing its job. You could say, well, you know, providing chemotherapy to women with uh, early stage breast cancer imparts a 26% uh, overall improved survival, and nobody knows what you're talking about. Um, and as it turns out, those studies are um, done in thousands of women, and the patient who's sitting in front of you, like Kathy, is one woman. And so you might be able to say to a patient like Kathy, well, you know, there's a 26% improved survival in patients who are given chemotherapy, but I can't tell you exactly what kind of a benefit you're going to have. You're not interested in what happens to a thousand women. You want to know what's going to happen to you. And so when you give the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, when you give the chemotherapy first before you've done anything to the breast, you can actually see how well the chemotherapy is working. And then if the chemotherapy does not appear to be working as well as you would like, you can immediately suggest or get in consultation with a medical oncologist and say, you know what, this particular recipe of chemotherapy drugs we're using is doing a pretty good job, but not completely the kind of job that we'd like to see. Maybe we want to add another kind of drug or a completely new regimen. In any case, Kathy was up for it and she said, sure, absolutely, let's start with a neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So we gave that to her over a period of four months and absolutely the tumor shrunk and it shrunk and it shrunk and it shrunk. I was seeing her as I normally do every two weeks as she was going through the therapy and at the end of her treatment um, couldn't feel the tumor. This was 10 centimeters to start with. Couldn't feel the tumor. Couldn't feel any lymph nodes under the arm. She elected to have a mastectomy which seemed reasonable because even though I couldn't feel the tumor and we did a mammogram afterwards and an ultrasound couldn't see anything, um, the tumor was pretty large to start with. And so she felt, look, you know, let's just do a mastectomy. And I thought that was very reasonable. So I did a mastectomy, and uh, at, this was before 
the day of uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy and remove the lymph nodes under her arm. There was no tumor in the breast, none. The chemotherapy had gotten rid of the tumor entirely. Uh, there were just a couple of little cancer cells buried deep in one of the lymph nodes. Again, a very, very good prognostic sign. That was 19 years ago, and Kathy has done very well since. The reason I want to bring up this subject is because in January of this year, a study was published that examined the question of breast cancer in African-American women. So we all know that breast cancer is more aggressive in black women, even though the incidence rates are actually a little bit lower in African-American women, but their overall recurrence rate and overall survival rates are distinctly worse than in equally matched white women in this country. The thinking was, well, black women don't have access to the kind of health care that white women do, and that may be part of it, but it's my particular belief, and there are data to support this, that African American women actually have a more aggressive form of cancer than white women. In fact, we see from other data that African American women have a 40% risk of dying from breast cancer compared to white women with the same disease. So their survival rates are 40% worse. The rate of local recurrence in the breast is higher. The rate of regional recurrence, which is the cancer comes back in one of the lymph nodes, is higher. And so it would seem that African-American women really have a more aggressive tumor. That's how I read the data. Certainly, they have less access to quality health care. So I think it's the combination of those two things that really is working against them. So at Georgia State University, uh, between the years 2005 and 2015, uh, a study was done of 1,850 black women with breast cancer. And these women were then assessed for the kind of treatment that they received. And it was discovered that women who received the neoadjuvant chemotherapy had better survival. They lived longer. Uh, they had a decreased risk of the tumor coming back regionally in the lymph nodes. And the recommendation from the researchers who did this particular study and published it, as I say, in January, suggests that African-American women, because they have more aggressive cancer, because their overall survival and their risk for local and regional recurrence is higher, these women should be offered neoadjuvant chemotherapy as a standard of care. I don't know that very many women, black women especially, are aware of this. This is an important subject because um, we think, as I say, we're going to have uh, a straight shot from diagnosis to surgery, maybe radiation therapy if the patient elects to have, elects to have lumpectomy, and then maybe chemotherapy, maybe some targeted therapy. So it's worth knowing that starting with chemotherapy can, in selected patients, not everyone, but in selected patients, be very advantageous, particularly for African-American women who have aggressive breast cancer, for women who present with large tumors that are fast growing, like my patient Kathy, and for women whose tumors may be large and in which it would be helpful to know in that particular patient how well is the chemotherapy doing. Because again, let me point out, if you start with surgery, and you remove the breast, or you start with surgery and you do lumpectomy and you give radiation therapy, and then you give chemotherapy, how will you know that the chemotherapy has had any impact unless you wait for two years, three years, five years, 10 years? If you begin with the chemotherapy, you can see how well the chemotherapy is working in that particular patient. And you can make decisions based on the kind of response rate the patient is experiencing to the chemo to begin with. The other thing that's very important and is often overlooked is that when you start with chemotherapy and you shrink the tumor, and about 80% of tumors will shrink, this is a high percentage of tumors that will shrink if you start with chemotherapy, these patients require less surgery. Now, Kathy elected to have a mastectomy because she started with a very large tumor, but there have been patients who've started with, say, five centimeter tumors or four centimeter tumors, and what we find is that at the end of the chemotherapy, the patients really only require a very modest lumpectomy and then the radiation therapy. 
So if you have any questions about this, please let me know. I'll leave your comments and questions below. Um, I'm going to give you a link, as I normally do, to something completely different and hopefully something that you'll enjoy. I happen to be uh, very much an advocate uh, and collector of perfumes. Uh, and this is a video uh, from a woman who clearly loves perfumes, and she does a great job talking about her five favorite perfumes in which she discusses seven. So it's a woman after my own heart. Um, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, please thumbs up, subscribe, share, thumbs up to you, thumbs down to breast cancer.